Okay, you didn't steal from somebody and say it's all right because that's on the, that's covered by the cross. Okay, that's that that's European. Okay, but then what do you expect for people who have no spirituality? Something has to be created or fabricated to give them a chance of thinking that they can be right with God. Now, I know I'm talking heavy now. See, in other words, I can't find anything in the sacred text to provide the opportunity for the Gentiles to get right with God. I can't find nothing. Maybe you can. And see, again, but then again, that's why this was put here. Please understand that, people. That's the whole reason why the New Testament was written. That's the whole reason. To give us a program for the Gentiles to get into God's agenda. Am I making sense here? Nobody has a gospel to the Gentiles but Paul. That's deep. And then notice what he says. He says in the 14th verse, For he is our peace who hath made both one. Notice what it says. Who hath made both two. He's talking here. What two is he talking about? Who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Who is the two that he's talking about? Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law. Notice what he's saying here. He's actually saying that the law is enmity. The commandments of God is enmity or against us. Mm. This is deep. Of the commandments contained in ordinances. Notice it here now. 15 verse, for to make in himself of twain, meaning two, one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross. Now, what are these two things that he's talking about that have been made one by the blood of the cross? He's talking about the Jew. And the Gentile. And because of the blood sacrifice, they are now one and it's called the church. Is this thing deep? Eighteenth verse, for through him we both. Now, I thought we read about three different people in Genesis. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Well, why is he just referring to two people now? Why not say, through him we three have access? Right. We're left out of this program. That's my point, people. We're left totally out of the New Testament program as black African people. The only way you can feel that you've been a part of it is if you call yourself what your slave master been calling themselves, and that's Gentile. Am I making sense? Do y'all see this thing? I want to be, are you, is this clear? Do y'all see this? Okay, okay. Yes. I'll tell you what, write it down, because I'm taping this, and, and, I'll, and in about five minutes I'm going to stop and then, you know, answer some questions. All right. So does everybody understand this predicament of the Pauline message here. Now, uh, in the next tape and next week, what we're going to do is break down and explain how Paul came up with his message to the Gentiles. Okay, that's what we're going to do in the next tape. Our time is almost up now, uh, but now we've tried to lay the foundation to show you clearly, all right, that Paul had an encounter. In the next tape, we'll talk about the fact that Paul had went to get permission from the religious leaders to persecute the Christians, even though they weren't called that at that time. The Bible says they were, but the concept of Christian didn't even come into existence until a couple of centuries later. 
All right, they were called Nazareans. That's what they were called. And Essenes, that's what they were called. Okay, and Paul gets permission, according to the biblical text, to go put these people to death for coming up with this new teaching. And he goes out and he's slaughtering all these people, according to the biblical record. And on his road, on his way on the Damascus Road, this bright light shines out of the sky, and it's so bright that he falls to the ground, and he speaks, and his voice comes out of it. And he says, Who, who art thou, Lord? And, and the voice speaks back, It is I, I'm Jesus, who you persecuting. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. And he says, you know, okay, Lord, you know, what, what, what do you want me to do? He says, I want you to get up from where you are and go down to Damascus and see a man named Ananias. Go to Straight Street down there, and he'll tell you what to do. Because, and, it, and it actually says, in fact, let's, let's read what it says there. It's deep. Turn to Acts. Uh, let's see if that's the ninth chapter here. Okay, I got... Romans. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to see where it actually says, Five appeared unto you this day to make you a minister. All right. Let's go to the... 22nd chapter. Yeah, buddy. Mm. Oh, man. I'm overlooking this. Uh... Okay, okay, okay. Um, if I will show him. Okay, well, I, we'll, we'll get that verse next week because we're going to go through that in the text. But actually what it says is, Paul, I've appeared unto you this day to make thee a minister. Isn't that deep? I mean, just out of nowhere, he got ordained. On the spot. With a light around him. Got ordained and called to the ministry. Just like that. Boom. And you want to know why some of our preachers today... Right? I mean, you know, it's really deep. We don't want to accept our people today who we see who are self-proclaimed ministers. Okay? Because we feel like, you know, you haven't been to Bible college, you haven't been trained, da 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 But yet we will take the testimony of a biblical character who has nobody to speak for him but himself. Okay? You see it? What chapter is it? Acts 26, 16. Thank you, my sister, because I, I, hate, I hate calling out verses and can't show you where it is, y'all. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Notice the 15th verse. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. Delivering, notice this, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith. So we're going to pick up in tape two and next week of that uh, dealing with Paul's uh, conversion experience. All right. And how all of that played a major part of uh, where we are today.